Good morning, this is Caitlin at the Creation Museum, and we're in the petting zoo again today with Leanne, the zoo supervisor, and we're going to be working with the goats today. So I'll turn it over to you, Leanne. Hi everybody, welcome to the Creation Museum Zoo. So a lot of you probably um, have seen videos or pictures or even come and visited and have seen our baby pygmy goats. So today I thought we'd kind of show off our little boys. We've started um, doing positive reinforcement training with them, target training. Um, so I thought we'd show off kind of some of the cool things we've been working on with them. Um, so when we do all the training we do here at the Creation Museum is a positive reinforcement. So basically, we ask the animal to do something, and then once they do it, they get rewarded with either um, a treat, or sometimes it can be scratches or some sort of other reward. It pretty much just depends on the animal, whatever that motivates them the most is what we will use. Um, so with our baby pygmy goats, um, we started just introducing um, the target sticks to them. So you can see we have these sticks that have tennis balls on the end of them. So what we do is we ask them to touch the, the end of the stick with their nose. Um, and then once they do that, they get rewarded. Um, so we started out using a clicker. So every time they would touch it, we would click and say good and then reward them with a treat. Um, so now we've got them pretty much on just uh, verbal so we'll ask them to target and then once they target we'll say good and then they'll also then they'll get a treat. So some of the behaviors we're, we're currently working on is getting them to fo uh, follow the target pole so they will actually follow that tennis ball around um, for a certain <laughs> certain distance <laughs> and then we'll, we'll reward them with good and then they'll also get a treat. So you can see these guys are very, very motivated to get, <laughs> get, a food, get food. Um, we're also teaching them to place or station. So we've got this, we've got this um, gray box over here that we have them um, climb up on. We tell them to station or place, and they'll, um, they'll jump up on there. So this is actually very helpful for us because we um, also we have a scale that's also gray. So um, we use that. Um, to be able, we're using this to be able to get them to just um, go on a scale for us so we can keep a good track of their weights. Um, so we try to weigh, especially a lot of our smaller animals, we try to weigh them fairly frequently um, because if, a, if a, there's a change in weight, a decrease or an increase, that helps us um, modify their diet to give them what they need. It also can help us identify health issues and things earlier. So a lot of the behaviors we're going to be teaching these guys are, are for health, for maintenance as well. We're also, I'm working on them getting them to just pick up their feet when I ask them to. So for hoof trims and just checking their feet, it's a lot less stressful for them than having to um, try to physically restrain them and then um, pick up their feet. So um, Edmund over there and Tim, they're quite the team. Um, <laughs> He works really well for Tim. He doesn't work so well for everybody else. Um, just like, you know, your dogs and cats kind of have a favorite person, our goats also have favorite people. So um, Tim and Edmund are quite the little team. Um, then Scotty over here, she has Tumnus. He's the one with the red collar and the red target stick. So we try to keep everything the same color, mostly for us zookeepers, so we know whose things are who. And then Heather over here has Peter, and he is the blue one. Um, so these guys were named after uh, characters in Narnia. We had a naming contest earlier this spring when we acquired these guys to name them. Um, so they've been a big hit this summer. We've had them here in our petting area uh, uh, periodically. Um, since they're still babies, um, we're kind of limiting the amount of time they're out here because we don't want them to get tired or also get too much food um, as well. We're currently working on with these guys getting them not to jump up um, when people feed them so right now we're asking our guests to just feed them outside the of the fence of the petting area and then they can come in and we have some brushes that you can brush the goats with which they all really really enjoy um, a lot so these guys are all pygmy goats pygmy goats um, typically can get anywhere from 35 to 60 pounds depending on um, what size their mom and dad were. Um, right now these guys are all about 35 pounds. Um, we just weighed them last week and um, Edmund is actually the, the heaviest. He's about 34 and a half pounds. Um, Peter is about 33 and Tumnus is our lightweight. He's like 32 right now. <laughs> um, so these guys are definitely a hit with with the kids and they're also they're one of our zookeeper favorites as well. Um, they're just really smart little guys. They love to come over and just snuggle with you, say hi. Um, they're just a huge, huge hit here at the museum. We'll see if Peter will. Heather, can you get Peter to station up on the? Target. Target. <laughs> well, or Edmund can do it. Good boy. So, yeah, this is, 
This is just the start of what we're going to do with them. Um, since they're so young and they're so motivated to learn, we're going to be able to teach them a lot of things. Um, my hope is to get them trained to the point where we can actually have kids help us train them and have them um, follow, follow kids around and let, let kids kind of learn and see how we, we do training here at the museum. So um, we're going to probably be working with them over the rest of the fall and the winter to get them get some behaviors down, um, like the following and station. Um, I'm going to try to teach them to weave through um, some traffic cones here in a couple weeks once we get the rest of these behaviors down. So training like this is just really helpful um, for the animals. It gives them something to do, um, makes them use their brains a little bit. You know, here at the Creation Museum, they have the they've got the easy life. They get they have all the food all all the food, all the water they need, they've got a nice comfy place to sleep. So it's really important to give them things to do so they don't get bored because when animals get bored it's not good for them. They can exhibit negative behaviors um, and just not be happy, not have happy lives. So using training like this is just one of the many ways um, we use enrichment. It's a type of enrichment that um, just makes them use their brains. It's also good for our zookeepers, um, helps us build relationships with the animals um, because when you have a relationship with the animal, animal is going to trust you more and you're going to be able to do more things with them. So if an animal were to say get hurt or something, we can go in there and they know we're going to take care of them. They're not going to be trying to fight us as we're trying to take care of them. <laughs> so it, it kind of can be a madhouse a little bit, um, training, trying to train three goats at one time. So I have to have three when we train these guys, we have to have three people here <laughs> because if you don't have three people, it just turns into actually <laughs> chaos. Right now it is organized chaos. Um, but you can just see how much fun they're having and my keepers are having. And um, we're trying to do this a couple times um, during the afternoon as well. We'll come over here and work with them so guests can kind of see what they're capable of and, and can just see kind of what we do with some of our animals here. Now you might notice the two, the two other pygmy goats in here with um, the babies. These are This is Bindi and Lick Lick. This is Lick Lick here. She's got the blue collar on. And then her twin sister Bindi um, is over there. She's got a red collar. Um, so these guys have been a uh, favorite of guests for uh, quite a while. These guys have been here for eight years. They were they are some of the zoo originals. They were babies when the petting zoo first opened. Um, so this year is at, this week is actually their last full week here. They are going to be going into goat retirement. <laughs> the end of this week, um, they're going to live um, one of our staff members' homes that has a donkey and two sheep. So these girls are going to go and um, enjoy grass and just being out in the pasture and just having fun um, with their daughter. Um, over there. So, of course, they're getting a little bit older, um, and just like we start having aches and showing signs of age because we live in a fallen world, these ladies have uh, definitely put in their time, and they're showing to they're starting to show their age a little bit. So, we really here at the Creation Museum, we really want to take care of our animals to the best of our abilities. Um, so, we really feel it's in their best interest to retire and spend um, their golden years out in a pasture just enjoying life, living life to its fullest. So um, Saturday will be your last day to come and pet and love on Bindi and Lick Lick and then they're going to go to their new home where they will be definitely loved and cared for and they'll have a good. <laughs> mm -hmm. So since we've done quite a bit of um, training so far with these guys, getting them to do some stuff, we're actually going to do some painting with Peter Edmund and Tumnus. So pretty much all of our animals here are trained um, in some way to paint. Once again, it's another one of those behaviors that enriches their lives. <laughs> and, um, Peter is over here thinking he's a little mountain goat. Um, enriches their lives, and it builds a relationship between them and our keepers, which is very important. So I'm going to go over and grab our paper and our paints. We're going to have them each paint based on the color, their color. So we're going to do red, green, and blue. Those are the three colors we're going to do, we're going to work on today. So I'm going to go over and grab our paper and grab some paint. If you have any questions for Leanne about the goats or anything here at the petting zoo, feel free to leave those in the comments below and we'll try to answer them. He 
really, really enjoys this. He's probably the best out of the three <laughs> of painting. <laughs> He's kind of like the quiet one. So just like all each of your dog, you know, dogs have different, you know, kind of personalities. Goats are the same way. Okay, hold on, Tumnus. Hang on, back. Goats have their own unique characteristics. So Tumnus here, he's kind of the quiet, just chill one. He doesn't get excited about a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> um, he's kind of, the, he's always been the snuggle buddy. From the time we got him when he was a baby, he would just come up and curl up on your lap and go to sleep when we were, when we were bottle feeding him. So we were kind of surprised that he took to uh, painting as well as he did. So Leanne, we had somebody who tuned in a little later um, after you explained about the training and they were asking what was on the end of the sticks that the trainers were using to work with the goats. Yes, yeah, so um, you can get um, target, um, they're called target sticks or target poles. Um, so you can, they're basically a stick with something on the end for them to target. We use, I make my own, so I actually just use a dowel rod and a tennis ball. That's what I use for my target poles. So that way they're pretty cheap, so if one gets broken or damaged, I can replace it pretty easily. Um, I used to like to use a bright color tennis ball. Um, a lot of animals are colorblind, so um, it just helps them be able to see it a little bit better. So with these guys, we just like to keep with, uh, with the color theme of their, of their collars just because it makes it easier for zookeepers to know which target pole goes to which goat. <laughs> but they would really target e any of the, the poles if you would ask them to. Okay, very good, bud. So that's Tumnus's artwork. So we'll get, we'll get one of the other goats over here. Who wants to be next? Our, our other pygmy girls here are like, hey, what about us? We're being good too. I'm going to give this to you. We're going to walk away. Come on, Tumnus. Okay. First things first, let me get this. Do you want this? Oh, yeah. Your food is beautiful. So these guys, their, their teeth are still kind of little, so I'm kind of getting the. Um, kind of putting a hole in the apple for him to start so they don't get frustrated with it. He's got it. So with these guys, we actually will also do footprints. So what we'll do is we'll paint their feet and have them walk across the paper mm -hmm. as well. Um, it just requires us having a little bit more, I can't really, we have to have a little bit more um, controlled environments. We're not getting gravel everywhere like we are now. So all of our, as I said all, earlier, all of our animals do paint. Um, we do have our animal paintings for sale. You can buy them um, when camel rides are open. They're $10 a piece, and that basically just helps cover the cost of the paint, um, as well as uh, helps us buy other fun toys for them. So Peter here, he's definitely the... Uh, the boss of the three of them. <laughs> he is the herd leader, if you could say. He's very sneaky, but he's also very smart. He picked up um, training and painting very quickly. Um, he probably picked up the target training the... But I just got paint on your face, didn't I? Um, the quickest. Now, if you're worried about this paint, this is just a non-toxic um, finger kids type paint. So, kids paint with it. All our animals paint with it, so if they ingest a little bit of it, it's just fine. Won't hurt them at all, because that is a concern. When we started painting with them, we wanted to make sure we researched our paint out, made sure it was going to be safe for the animals, wasn't going to cause any harm to them if it got on their skin or, as I said, if they ingest it. Okay, good job, bud. You're eating the paintbrush. <laughs> okay, now for the... Last painter.
Edmonds. Edmonds. Edmund is definitely our troublemaker. <laughs> he is, uh, he will be the one that you're just like, why, why, did, why did you just do that? He's actually locked me in um, our aviary over here several times. Um, so what happens will, he'll be playing with the latches and he'll latch it while I'm inside. And then I've got to call somebody to uh, come and let me out. <laughs> um, usually I'm yelling at Tim over here because this is, we call him Tim's goat, so um, I'm like, Tim, your goat locked me in again. <laughs> I think I would learn. Uh, he just really likes headbutting things, so um, that just is why I end up getting locked in places. Okay. So when we first started, Tumnus and Peter weren't too sure about this whole painting thing. Or not, Tum sorry, Edmund and Peter weren't. Tumnus was the one that took to it right away but now they all really like it. So they see us coming with paper and a paintbrush and they're like, oh yeah, we're gonna get treats. <laughs> so it's, it's fun for them. I really enjoy it a lot. Hold on, I gotta get more, you're, you're going through our paint here. Good job, bud. So eventually I hope to have them just hold the paintbrush in their mouth, but we'll see. They may decide, oh, we just want to eat the paintbrush, so. Might not be an option, but as I said, we'll see. So another one of our, um, one of our sheep, uh, Midnight, she's a Shetland sheep. Um, she's actually a really, really good painter as well. And um, we'll bring the stuff out and she'll just stand there. She'll just stand there and paint with us for really long periods of time. She loves it. Um, our camels really love painting as well, um, especially CJ. He gets really excited about it, but he does sometimes try to eat the paper as well. So he just gets excited that he's got something cool to do. Our miniature donkey Ella is our probably our best artist here. Um, she just really, really loves painting. You bring out the painting stuff, and even if it's not her day to paint, she'll be at the fence begging to go out and, and do her thing. Oh, that was a nice one. Good job. Do they all paint um, using the apples? Um, so it just depends on the animal. Um, so with the goats and um, with the goats in particular, we use apples or carrots. So they'll chew on the apple or carrot, and there's a paintbrush in the apple or carrot. Um, with our camels, we actually will put paint on their lips, and then we'll have them touch the paper with their lips. Their lips are very flexible, so they'll leave really pretty um, whisker marks across the paper. Um, our donkey paints, she actually holds a paintbrush in her mouth, um, so she'll we have her grab the paintbrush, and then she'll actually touch the paper and brush across the paper. Our cow Norman, um, he actually will paint his nose, and then we'll have him touch the paper. Um, our kawadis, they'll actually grab once the end of the paintbrush through the wire and then they'll touch it either moving around with their mouths or their paws and they'll kind of um, paint that way. So each animal has a different, a slightly different way of painting. We just kind of go off their natural behavior, things that they're going to do naturally and kind of use that to develop the painting behavior. So with goats, it's eating things. So it's easiest to put it, put the brush in a carrot or apple and then they'll eat the carrot or apple and move it around and, and paint with it. And so with these guys we also do do hoof prints occasionally um, which Station. is once again it's a good training for them to pick up their feet for us so um, we'll just kind of pick up their foot like that, paint it and, uh, and then have them sit it down. Um, so each animal is unique in the way it paints. What are some other forms of enrichment that you do with the goats? Uh, the goats are actually really fun to do enrichment with because um, they're very, very curious animals. Um, one of my favorites is I actually made a bamboo wind chime. So our grounds department, um, every time we have a storm or something, some bamboo will fall down. So we will get the bamboo. Um, and pretty much all of our animals enjoy um, eating the bamboo, playing with the bamboo. Um, so after, one time after they had stripped all the leaves off the bamboo, I took a couple pieces and drilled some holes in them and basically made a wind chime. And then I hung it up in with the goats. And the goats had really had a lot of fun just running their heads through it, um, head butting it. Um, so they were making some goat music with, uh, with the wind chime. Um, we will also do um, 
we do a lot of food enrichment with them. So as I was saying about the bamboo, um, we'll hang bamboo or other um, tree branches, which we call brows. We'll hang that up for them. Um, and the goats and sheep will strip the leaves and sometimes even the bark off of them as well. Um, goats tend to be a browse, an animal that does a lot of browsing. So that means they eat more of bushy or tree type material as opposed to grazing, um, which is great, for, which is why they're great for clearing um, really brushy grown up areas. Um, they really like that type of food. Um, so browse is a really important part of their diet. Um, a lot of times I'll try to tie it up and make it so they've got to like stand up on something else to kind of reach it. Um, so just use those natural behaviors of climbing to get things. Um, and then we also of course do our popsicles, our infamous uh, frozen popsicles for them. Um, they all really, really love those, really enjoy interacting with those. Um, we will also do scent enrichment, so we'll use perfumes, colognes, we'll use different spices and herbs, we'll rub that or soak that on something like tree branches and um, we'll, give that, we'll give that to them as well. So, so, so these guys are really fun to enrich. Um, we'll also put um, big balls in with them for them to play with. Um, so they're really fun to do things with. Edmund here has almost finished his apple. How old were they when training started, like with the target training and the painting? Um, we started about, painting with them we started probably about two months ago actually doing paintings with them. When they were, when we first got them we did some hoof prints with them. Um, but they were they were pretty small at that point, so we wanted to let them grow up and kind of get a little bit of an attention span going on before we did a whole lot of training with them. So it's really been the last two weeks that we've really started doing a lot of target training with them. Now we we started leash training them, so training them to walk on leashes, um, pretty much from the get go when we got them. And they're about four weeks old, um, so this means that we can walk them around the gardens. Um, Usually a couple times a week we like to walk them up to the front of the museum and kind of greet guests as they come in. So these guys are our, part of our meet and greet team. Um, we call them our kind of our animal ambassadors. They kind of let people know, hey, we have a zoo here at the Creation Museum. You should come and check us out. Um, so they, they're leash trained as well. So that is great for them because we can walk them through the gardens and they can see and smell new things. Um, hear new things, so it's really good for them. Once again, goes, going back to that enrichment idea, that's just very, very important. So, these guys are quite spoiled. <laughs> Were they born here in the petting zoo? No, these guys actually came from a farm in Pennsylvania. So, my parents actually found these guys for us um, and brought them out for us. So, Peter and Peter was six weeks old when we got him, and Edmund and Tumnus were about four weeks old. Um, so they actually, they came from the same farm, they do all have different moms, but they have the same dad. You can see we got quite a variety of colors here. Um, that's one of the things I was like, I want some really cool and different colors. Um, so we've got, got quite the different color patterns and, and things going on here. So. And how old are they? They're a little bit over six months old now. So I'm kind of excited to see how much bigger they get, if they stay about this size or or if they grow a little bit more, we'll kind of, we'll see. <laughs> I'd be good if they stayed this size, but I think they're, I think they're going to keep growing. <laughs> so the next spring, hopefully we'll be able to have some more babies here at the, at the zoo. Um, since we're retiring Bindi and Lick Lick, we'll, um, we'll be adding some more goats next spring as well. And when is the last day for the two going into retirement? This Saturday, so sep September 17th will be their, their first, uh, or their, sorry, their last day here at the museum. So. so if guests want to meet them, they need to come before yep. then. <laughs> yep, or if you've been here in the past and you remember them, come and, come and wish them well in their retirement. We'll probably do a little retirement party for them um, on Saturday. We'll probably make them a, a goat cake or something <laughs> for them to enjoy. <laughs> Said it's fun for them, but it's probably more fun for the zookeepers. <laughs> and our guests. <laughs> What would be in the goat cake? <laughs> um, I'll probably do, um, so we do, a, they get a sweet feed um, once a day. It's got some um, good stuff in it for all the goats. Um, so we'll do probably do a sweet mix, um, maybe some oats and some molasses, and probably some chopped up fruit as well in that. So. Awesome. We've got a comment from Liz. Um, she said she came in late. Are they Nigerian dwarves? These are pygmy goats. 
all these guys in here are pygmy goats. We do have two Nigerian dwarves, um, Floppet and Ike, um, so you might see them when you come and visit as well. They're sometimes in the petting area. Um, they're usually not, however, because Ike um, has figured out how to open gates. Um, so he'll, he, when he gets bored of being in the petting area, he'll actually let himself out. So we have to <laughs> monitor it closely when he's over here. So, um, but you can see them in our goat yard. Yes. <laughs> I think Peter is saying, I, I like being on top of this. <laughs> you want that? Oh no, Edmund was chewing on that. There you go. No, no, no. So as you can see, yeah. organized chaos is what I call this. <laughs> And how often did you say you do this? Um, I've been trying to do it several times a week where we bring them out in here and do some training with them. Um, so if you, especially if you come out in the afternoon, you might see one of us, or you might see a couple of zookeepers in our petting area working with them. And the only thing we ask of guests is if we are, if we are in here target training them, um, don't be trying to feed them, that sort of thing, because we are trying to get them to focus and engage with us. Target. You want that? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> So yeah, definitely come out and uh, visit our goats here at the Creation Museum Zoo. They love having guests. They love interacting with. Inter I'm, I'm all out. <laughs> they love interacting with kids and adults alike, and getting brushed and loved on, and getting fed. Yeah, right, Lick Lick. You love getting fed. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. And you also have to uh, go go check out um, uh, the Ararat Ridge Zoo at Ark Encounter. They have a petting area where they have 21 goats. So quite a bit more than we have here. They do have more room over there. Um, so go out, go over and check out their goats too because they've got some really awesome breeds of goats over there. Um, a little bit different breeds than we have here at the Creation Museum Zoo. So make sure you check out both petting, the petting zoo at Ark Encounter and then also uh, come here to the Creation Museum Zoo as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Like Leanne said, we hope to see you here and visit the animals and Ararat Ridge Zoo at the Ark Encounter as well. So we hope to see you next time.